Hello, this is Dr. Oz. Today I would like to talk about project management. Um, outline of this video will be, we will talk about project management techniques such as PERD and CPM. PERD is Program Evaluation Review Technique. And CPM is critical path method. Learn those. Then we will determine determine the project schedule. We will talk about the variability in activity times, and we will discuss cost time trade offs of the project uh, project crashing. So this chapter. Or this video, I would like to talk about Bethel Company. Uh, their revenue is $32.9 billion. Their headquarters is located in San Francisco. They have over 50,000 employees. And they are, they, have, they are doing so many multi-billion dollar projects. So they are big size projects. For example, they construct 30 high security data centers uh, for Equinix for $1.2 billion. A rail line between London and Channel Tunnel for $4.6 billion. Oil pipeline from Caspian Sea region to Russia for $850 million. Expanding Dubai Airport, $600 million. Miami Airport in Florida, $2 billion. And Yemen, they build a natural gas plant for $2 billion. And in Athens, uh, Greece, $2.6 billion for subway system and so on. So this company is working on high, big scale projects. And it's so important for them to understand really the importance of project management. All right, so learning objectives. I would like to talk about using gun charts. We'll talk about activity on ARC and activity on node networks. We will complete forward and backward passes for a project, and we will determine the critical path for a project. And then we'll calculate the variance of activity times, and then we'll talk about crashing the project if the project needs to be completed earlier or if there, if there is a delay in the project. So this is a sample project organization. Presence at the top, we have departments uh, below him or her, and Companies may have certain projects. Again, each project may have a project manager, and this project manager may work between different disciplines and get different staff. And then once this project is done, maybe that project manager or project team can be eliminated or can get a new project assignment and so on. If the, um, the project structure is constant over time, for more permanent structure, uh, we may use matrix organization. So you have different projects, and each project has project managers, and and they have different uh, people, staff from different uh, departments. The most, the, one of the most important thing in project management is work break breakdown structure. In other words, WBS. So there are levels in WBS. So first level is, <coughs> excuse me for my allergies, project. So you define the project. Two, you define the major tasks in this project. Then you will define subtasks in, this, in these major tasks. And then you define activities. or work packages in the subtask. All right, so let's look at an example here. Project is develop a Windows 8 operating system. Uh, and then major tasks are here, software design, cost management plan, system testing. You can see subtasks and work packages here. Uh, today, we'll talk about uh, three different types of techniques. One, gun chart. Two, critical path algorithm or method. Three, uh, program evaluation review technique, PERT. 
let's start with a simple gun chart so imagine that i have these uh activities five of them for example design activity starts in january and ends in june and prototyping starts in march and ends in april so basically i show the the uh breakdown in a timeline that's called gun chart if i want to show more detailed example for for delta jet you can see there are different components of the system and i need to do baggage claim let's say in this time it will take 10 minutes or so and at the end i, I can end up with passenger boarding so i need to do sequence of activities in a way that some of them are sequence some of them are parallel to complete the project so per and cpm these are uh network techniques And developed in 1950s, CPM developed by DuPont uh, for chemical plants, and per by Booz Allen and Hamilton, which is a consulting firm founded in 1914, and the revenue currently is around $5.8 billion globally. So co we consider here the precedence relationships and interdependency dependencies. Each uses a different estimate of activity times. Right. So six steps of PERT and CPM. We define the project and prepare the work breakdown structure, WBS, and then develop relationships among the activities, decide which activities must proceed, proceed, and which must follow others. Draw the network, connecting all the activities, assign time and or cost estimates, to each activity, compute the longest time path, Through the network, this is called the critical path. So the longest path is the critical path. And if there's any delay in that path, it will delay the entire project. So we use network to help plan, schedule, monitor, and control the project. Uh, there are some questions that PERT and CPM can answer. So one of them is, when will the entire project be completed? What are the critical activities and tasks in this project? Which are the non-critical activities? What's the probability that I can finish this project by a specific date? Is this project on time or behind schedule? Is the money spent equal to or less than or more than the budget that we set up? Are there enough resources available to finish this project on time? If the project must be finished in a shorter time, what's the way to do this with the least cost and there, there are different ways to show this network i can show you this and as an activity on notes so as you see i put the activity names in notes or i could put those activity names in arcs i think it's easier to use a o n in other words activity on notes so here as you see i can only start c if i finish b i can start b to to do that, I need to finish first A. To be able to start C, I need to finish A and B. To be able to start B or C, I need to finish A. To start C, I need to finish A and B. To start D, also I need to finish A and B, and so on. So these are some of the relationships. So let's give an example. Imagine that we have these eight activities, and these are the descriptions you can see here. And activity A, which is build internal components, doesn't have any predecessors. And activity B doesn't have any predecessor. And activity C has predecessor of A. A and B for D, C for E, C for F, D and E, activities D and E, they are predecessors of G. And F 
and G are the predecessors of H. So let's draw a uh, graph for this. So I would like to uh, take a screenshot of this so that I can see what's happening here quickly. Let me take a screenshot. That's good. All right, so <clears throat> I will start with start here. And then I will continue with A and B since they don't have any predecessors. A and B. And then if I look at C, to be able to start C, I need to finish A. If I look at D, I need to finish A and B to be able to start D. To be able to uh, start E, I need to finish C. To be able to start F, I need to finish C as well. To be able to start G, I need to finish D and E. To be able to finish start H, I need to finish F and G. And basically from here, you can we can finish the project. So this is my activity on Node Network. So critical path is the longest path. And critical path is the shortest time, shortest time in which the project can be completed and any delay in critical path activities delays the project critical path activities have no slack time so for the previous example i could really define my paths so my first path is right going from start to a and then A to C, C to F, F to H, and finish it, right? That's my path number one. A, C, F, H. I have another path here, which is uh, A, D, G, and H. A, D, G, and H. I have another path here, which is, if I should show as this, A, C, E, G, and H. A, C, E, G, and H. And I have another path here, which is this one, B, D, G, and H. B, D, G, and H. As you see here, I have four paths. If I calculate the length of these four paths, the longest path will give me the critical path. So I could do that. But if the model is so big, you cannot really identify all these paths, all right? So uh, let's talk about slide 24. Uh, we need to estimate each of these activity durations. These are, let's say, two, three, two, four, four, three, five, and two. If you add them up, you will get 25 weeks. 
but it doesn't mean that I have to, I can finish this project in 25 weeks. I can make it easy, uh, shorter if I do multiple tests at, at the same time. So let's look at the uh, earliest start, earliest finish, latest start, latest finish terminology. Earliest start is the time at which an activity can start, assuming all predecessors have been completed. So if all predecessors have to be completed, then you can start that, that's the earliest time. Earliest finish is earliest time at which an activity can be finished. Latest start time is the latest time at which an activity can start so as to not delay the entire completion time. Latest time, latest finishes, latest time by which an activity has to be finished so as to not delay the completion time of the project, entire project. All right, so let's look at the activity format. So I will put in the middle the activity name. I will put earliest start time here. I will put the earliest finish time right here. I will put the latest start time here. And I will put the latest finish time here. And I will put the activity duration here. All right. So there are some uh, early start time rules. If an activity has only a single immediate predecessor, its earliest start time equals to earliest finish time of the predecessor. However, if an activity has multiple immediate predecessors, then ES is the maximum of all EF values. ES, earliest start time, is the maximum of earliest finish time of all immediate predecessors. Okay. So in forward pass, uh, we also need to calculate earliest finish time. And basically, the earliest finish time is the earliest start time for an activity plus the activity time. So let's take a look at an example here. For the activity start, the duration is zero. Earliest start time is zero. Zero plus zero will give you the earliest finish time, which is zero as well. So let's draw our... Uh, diagram here, uh, activity or not diagram. Let's see, I'm not a really art person. I will do my best. So this is my first one. Okay, it's my first one. And this is start. And activity duration is zero. And then I will have one, two, three activities here. I will have um, H here. I will have E here. I will have activity B, activity D, and activity G here. So let's do this.
All right. So now I can just um, write the activity names. Activity A, which takes two weeks. Activity C, which will take two weeks. Act activity F, which will take three weeks. Activity H, I expect it to uh, last two weeks. Activity E, which is four weeks. Activity B, which is three weeks. Activity D, which is four weeks. Activity G, which is five weeks. So let's show the relationships here. Dependencies that we talked about. All right, beautiful. Now let's make the calculations now. Um, the earliest start time, yes, for start activity is zero. I can start at time zero. Zero plus zero will give me zero, earliest finish time. So activity has A doesn't have predecessors, so I can start at zero. Zero plus two will give me early fi earliest finish time is two. B is the same situation, I can start at zero. 0 plus 3, earliest finish time will be 3. So for activity C, I can start earliest at 2 because I need to first finish activity A. 2 plus 2 will give me 4, earliest finish time. Then I'll uh, look at D. Uh, I need to finish both A and B to be able to start D. So I look at 2 and 3. I take the maximum of these two numbers, which is 3. 3 plus 4 will give me uh, earliest finish time for D as seven weeks. And if I look at E, I need to finish C to be able to start E. So I need to, I can't wait until, I need to wait until four, week four. Four plus four will give me eight earliest finish time. If I look at F, I need to finish C again. So I can start earliest at week four. Four plus three will give me earliest finish time at seven. So for H, uh, looks like I forgot the arrow here. For H, I need to wait G and F. So first I need to calculate G. So G, I can start at, uh, at eight. The reason is that I need to finish E and D. So eight and seven, the maximum of these two numbers is eight. So eight plus five, that's the earliest finish time, which is 13 for H. Now I need to finish F and G, I can finish earliest F at seven and G at 13, maximum of seven and 13 will give me 13, earliest start time. 13 plus two will give me earliest finish time, which is 15. So this is called um, forward pass, all right? So we are done with the first forward pass and we calculate the earliest start time and earliest finish time for these eight activities. All right, so then, we need to consider backward pass. So here we have latest finish time rule. Uh, basically what we do in latest finish time is we take the minimum of, not maximum this time, minimum of latest start time of all immediate not uh, dependence this time, uh, predecessors this time, following activities. Following activities. All right. And then late start time will be late finish time minus the activity time. All right, so. If you think about the same uh, same graph right here, let me just take a screenshot of this and work on this. All right. So let's work on this in slide number here, uh, 33. I will draw it again. All right, so we are done here now. Let's go backward pass. So I will start with an activity H because that's the activity that doesn't have any 
dependent. So the latest, uh, earliest finish time was 15. So latest finish time will be exactly the same thing, 15. And then 15 minus two, which is activity time, will give me latest start time, which is 13. So let's go to F. So F has only one dependent, which is H. So that has to start at 13. So the latest time I can finish this is 13. 13 minus three will give me 10. So let's do the same calculation for G. So latest start time for H is uh, 13. And latest finish time for G is 13 as well. So that H is not delayed so that the project is not delayed. 13 minus five will give me eight for the latest uh, start time for G. So now let's take a look at D. Uh, D has dependent of G. I need to start G latest at eight. So I need to finish then D latest at eight. Eight minus four will give me latest start time for D is four. Let's take a look at E. So E has one dependent, which is G. I need to start G latest eight. That means I need to finish E latest eight. Eight minus four will give me latest start time for E as four as well. So let's take a look at C now. C has two dependents, F and E. So I need to start latest uh, for F at week 10. E is week four. So I take the minimum of 10 and four, which is four. That means that I need to finish C the latest at week four, finish C latest at week four, so that I will not delay E, so that that will not delay G, so that it will not delay H, so that the project won't be delayed. So C earliest, uh, latest finish time is four, minus activity time of two, the latest start time for C is then two. Let's go to A, so to be able to start C at latest two, latest finish time for activity A should be two as well. Two minus activity time of two for A is gonna give me zero. And finally, let's do B. B has one dependent, which is D. The latest start time for D is four. So B has to be finished latest at four. Four minus three will give me one. That's latest start time for B. All right, so uh, that's good. So now, once I created this backward pass as well, now I can calculate the select time. And select time is uh, the length of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the entire project. Right? And there are different ways to calculate slack. One way is to do it is latest start time minus earliest start time. Or I could calculate slack as latest finish time minus earliest finish time. Either way should give me the same result. So let's take a look at those numbers. Um, I just translate these values into this table. And now, again, I can look at this and these are the same. So now I can calculate slack, let's say calculate based on LS minus ES. So LS is here, zero minus ES is zero, zero minus zero is zero. One minus zero is one, two minus two is zero, uh, four minus three is one, four minus four is zero, 10 minus four is six. That means that I, I don't have to start um, F at four, I could start at even 10. So I have slack of six. This gives me so much flexibility in terms of starting F. And eight minus eight for G is zero, 13 minus 13 is zero. So whichever slacks are um, zero, that means that those activities are critical. So yes, A is critical, yes, C is critical, yes, E is critical, and yes, G and H. Those are critical activities. So you can find the critical path like this as well, right? These are the activities that create the critical path. All right, so this is a completed version of those. And as you see here, um, there is no slack here. So there is no slack here. This is critical activity. That's why I put an arrow here, the bold. 
and there is no select here so this is bold as well there is no select here bold there is no select here bold and there is no select here bold so you can see that that's the critical path right there and f is not in the critical path d is not in critical path or b because they have selects and we can translate this information into a um, gun chart so if i take a look at the values at the top for example for a zero and two i can put that one in my gun chart build internal components i can start at time zero and i can finish it at the end of the second week right and if you look at this i can start c early start time two early finish time is four so c as you see start at two finish at the end of four um and also i could this is my gun chart. Also, I could build my gun chart based on the late, latest start time and latest finish time. So I could use the bottom numbers, 0 and 2, for a right here, um, for C, 2 and 4, and for F, 10 and 3. Just giving some examples. C is starting at 2 and finishing at 4, and F is, as you see, uh, here I can start all the way till the end of the 10 and finish it here by the um, by the uh, 13 10 and 13 and you can see the slack for F like F I could start right here or I could start wait all the way until here to start and finish up all right so that's it for this video until next video enjoy supply chain management